How's it going, everybody? And let me turn up the volume. Do I dare just stay away from New Living Translation? Let's just do it. And entering into a ship. Oof. The world of that, of... And entering into a ship of... That's what you get. That's what you get. Um, first, we can do pronunciation. I mean, why not? We are looking at how to pronounce these names, as well as how to say more interesting but often confusing biblical names that many get wrong. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel. How do you say it? Adramitium. Adramitium. Easy once you know. Adramitium. 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 What is that? Like, what does that mean? Let's go with meaning or deaf. Yeah, I guess. The ship of Adramitium is a ship that appears in the New Testament in the account of Paul's voyage to Rome. The ship was used to transport Paul and other prisoners from, oh, it's a city, or it's a locale. We got this. And entering into a ship of Edramitium, we launched. See, that's what the King James does, of. You want to just see what it said in the New Living? <laughs> This is what happens. This is what happens. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It's too late now, huh? And entering into a ship of... Oh. Still in the King James. I think I'm lacking sleep. It's been a long day. Good day. So... Aristarchus. From Thessalonica was also with us. We left on a ship whose home port was Edramitium. Do you see how much easier they spelled that out for us? And here's the names on the back end in the King James. And entering into a ship of Edramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast, one Aristarchus, uh, Macedonia of Thessalonica, Thessalonica being with us. Aristarchus, a uh, Macedonian from Thessalonica, was also with us. We left on a ship whose home port was Adramitium on the northwest coast of the province of Asia. It was scheduled to make several stops at ports along the coast of the province. All of that is in verse 2 in the New Living. Holy cow. That's why we read it in the New Living and then come back later. I thought this was going to be pretty simple because I know this whole story. But still, that's just how confusing uh, the Greek over to the King James, is, was, were, has, have, had. And the next day, I'm going to stay in the King James because I'm just a glutton. And the next day, we touched at Sidon, or Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. See, I knew the story was easy once you get going. I just got absolutely tripped by that first verse, which was verse two. And when we had sailed over to the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. Now, the cities, they're going to be in both, and they're just crazy. And there, the centurion found the ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. 
And when we had sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against Snidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmon. And hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lesia. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the ladding and the ship, but of our lives also. Do you all understand what's going on? It's a little... It's a little difficult, but weather got rough and Paul started to warn them. Actually, he made like a prophecy of what was going to happen. We struggled along the coast with great difficulty and finally arriving at Fair Havens near the town of Lycia. We had lost a lot of time. The weather was becoming dangerous for the sea travel uh, was because of it was so late in the fall. And Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Men, he said, I believe there's trouble ahead. If we go on shipwreck loss of cargo, and danger to our lives as well. So he made a prophecy. He told him the deal. He was telling him the truth. It does come true. Let's continue on in Revelation 9, and then we will uh, hit the first four, verses, first four verses of Revelation 10. By these three was a third part of men killed by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For the power is in their mouth, and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship the devils, the idols of gold and silver and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Because, of course, they've got the mark. They're possessed. There's no repenting that's going to take place, no matter what you do to them because it's really the fallen angels. And I saw another in a human body. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with the cloud. And a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet pillars of fire. Is this Jesus? Or is this just an angel? I think it's just an angel. But I think. It's ambiguous, if I'm not mistaken, last time we went through this. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Because remember, the false prophet and the false Jesus, one's beast out of the sea, the other's beast out of the earth. So it would make sense that this is Jesus, both land and sea. Anti-Jesus, real Jesus. Anti-Jesus anti slash false prophet. Flip side, of course, Jesus. Or Jesus is the upside. They're always the upside downside, I guess I should say. Or better said. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth, comma, Next verse, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. Of course, that represents Jesus also. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we figured this was Jesus. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So we're not going to know, are we? I'm glad you're here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.